Hello, gonna review some alcohol today. Uh, I've got two different things. One is whiskey and one is vodka. Now the vodka is what we're gonna start on and uh, it is a little bit of an interesting one. Uh, a friend of mine has made me some vodka. He's getting into distilling and um, thought he'd give vodka a go. You know, he made me a small little bottle and he was curious to see sort of how it does against stuff that you might find on the shelves. Stuff made by actual companies. He just sort of wanted to know what my opinion is and um, you know, as somebody who's tried quite a large amount of vodka, I've got some pretty um, big opinions on vodka. So I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see how this goes. Um, he's even made a little custom label. It says alcohol smells like clean spirits. So he's kind of done a bit of a Nirvana thing with that, which is pretty cool. I, I had a bit of a chuckle, it's quite nice. All right, so we're gonna try some of that, see how we go. All right. Oop, the label's slipping off. Oop, anyway. Now the smell is interesting because it sort of smells a little bit like um, sake, uh, like the, that's a Japanese spirit. Which is, that's weird. I've never in my life smelt vodka um, that, that had, uh, that smelt like sake. Um, and it's a really hard smell to describe because it's almost like this weird funkiness. Um, it's quite a funky smell. Um, so I'm kind of really wondering where that's, that's come from. It's kind of cool though. I actually like the smell of sake and sake is quite nice. Um, I'm very curious to see what it tastes like now that I've smelt it. Uh, so we're gonna have a bit of a, bit of a go. Okay. I wouldn't say that it tastes quite like sake. Like I can taste a little bit of the, so what it smells like, I can taste a faint trace amount of that. Um, so that's interesting. Very slight funkiness to it, which honestly I don't mind, but it doesn't, I wouldn't say it tastes like sake necessarily. Um, <clears throat> but it's quite, quite nice actually. Um, and you know, I was a bit, a bit hesitant, right? Cause it's sort of like reviewing something that a friend has made for you is, is a bit, it's almost morally questionable in a sense. Cause it's like, well, where do I draw the line here? Do I completely just like, what if it's bad? Do I completely destroy them? Do I lie to them? Like, fuck, like, how do you navigate this kind of problem? Um, but thankfully, He's done a really good job. I reckon my friends really nailed this actually. Like, so flavor wise, um, quite interesting. It's, it's different to honestly anything else I've tried before. It's a bit floral, um, quite interesting flavor wise. Doesn't taste, taste like cheap or nasty flavor wise. It's quite unique actually, really cool. So sort of floral, similar to like some of the Japanese whiskey, not whiskey, <laughs> I reviewed too much whiskey. Um, Japanese vodka that I've tried before. Kind of got that weird herbal sort of floral thing going on there. Slight funkiness to it, um, which I don't know is ideal for vodka, but honestly, I kind of like it. I, I think that's cool. Um, very smooth, honestly, like it doesn't burn at all. Um, very, very smooth, very approachable. Nice flavor. It doesn't taste cheap, nasty, samesy. Cause you know, there's a lot of like, <laughs> really crappy vodkas, like, you know, what is it, Mishka, Razkov, Red Square. I always make examples of them because they just suck. They've got very similar flavors and it's all just like, oh, the taste of it just makes you cringe and like, I can't stand it. That's really quite impressive. Excuse me. So yeah, where does this sort of place in terms of like, how, do, how does this compare to stuff that you might buy from a store? How has he done? Um, I feel like, okay, so it's 40% alcohol as well. I didn't actually see that on the label. So this is around 40% alcohol. I don't know how many times he's distilled this or filtered it. I'm pretty sure he mentioned that to me, but I can't remember, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's very smooth. Um, so I usually use Smirnoff as kind of like a baseline because Smirnoff is, 
it's not fantastic. It's like the go-to for a lot of people, you know, it mixes with stuff really well. If you want to shot it or whatever, it's fine. It's probably not going to be a hugely pleasant experience, but it's acceptable. I find the flavor of Smirnoff to be okay. Um, a little gross, but it's not, it's not the worst. It's, it's, you can deal with it. Um, so I, I use Smirnoff often as sort of a baseline as like, this is the minimum acceptable kind of vodka and anything that's like shittier than Smirnoff, like you fucked up basically. Um, and this is definitely without a doubt better than Smirnoff. So that's for something that's been made at home. That's a big thumbs up. Like that's awesome. Um, to me, this actually seems kind of like almost like a mid tier kind of vodka, like for something like that. I would probably pay like for, for a 700 mil bottle of that. He's giving me a fairly small one, which is cool. Probably like $40 a bottle. That low 40s kind of price bracket. Cause I'm pretty happy with that. Like, damn. And it's kind of crazy that somebody who's only really just getting into this type of thing um, can make something like that with fairly simple equipment. Like he's using um, an air still I think it's probably like two liters or whatever for memory. You can buy those on eBay, AliExpress, online for anywhere between like 80 bucks to $200, depending on if it's like one of the brand name ones or if it's just generic or whatever. But um, those air stills are very inexpensive, um, easy to use. Um, I'd say you're pretty limited with what you can kind of do with them. Um, like if you wanted to get into like dark spirits or whatever, like maybe you might not be able to kind of go as crazy with that in terms of like you customizing your own sort of spirits. Um, but for stuff like vodka, if you're using an air still, you can, um, you can play around a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's kind of crazy that he's managed to make something that is pretty, honestly, pretty nice to drink, like even straight. Uh, and it's like, this, this is somebody who's just gotten kind of just getting into this very basic equipment and he's kind of just like chat all over a whole bunch of companies that actually have really expensive equipment to make vodka with. It's just like what excuse do companies have <laughs> to be churning out absolute shit when old mate over here is, is churning out gold like this. Like that's crazy to me. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm gushing a little bit. This is a good job. Um, I would rate that. I reckon. Hmm. It's hard. It's really hard. I want to say like a seven out of ten. That's seven out of ten. That's that's solid. Um. So yep, vodka is done and dusted. We're gonna move on to some whiskey now. So we've got a uh, Slipknot whiskey. So it's licensed Slipknot whiskey. Uh, see if we can pull up the branding. I don't know if it's gonna focus. It's always a fun part. Eh, not really. Eh, there we go. Yep. So there we have it. It's the number nine, uh, number nine whiskey made in Iowa. I don't know if it's Iowa whiskey. I don't know if that's the name of the distillery or what. Uh, I'll just read the description on the back of it. Uh, what does it say? It says Slipknot and Cedar Ridge. Okay, Cedar Ridge Distillery makes this. Uh, Slipknot and Cedar Ridge Distillery, two groups of people born and raised in Iowa and committed to quality and hard work. We collaborated on number nine whiskey, which in addition to Iowa corn gets some extra spice from its rye content. Uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Live life and as always be safe. Cheers, clown. Um, interesting. Yeah, I admittedly haven't tried a lot of um, like American style whiskey with like made from like corn, rye, that type of thing. Um, so my palate's not really accustomed to this type of thing. So this will be interesting. Um, yeah, like I can't say that this is like in terms of like what I like, my first choice. Um, I'm, I'm more like Scotch, Japanese whiskey um, because they taste completely different to American style whiskey. Um, but this should be interesting. We're going to pour some and have a bit of a go. Oh, all right, let's go. I don't want to get too overboard. All right. Mm. 
I'd say smell-wise, it, it, it smells pretty similar to most other um, American-style whiskeys. I don't really know how to place what I'm smelling there, like how to describe it. It's very light on the nose, like there's not much going on smell-wise, um, so it's really hard to make much of it. So I'm gonna have a bit of a sip. actually really pleasant um i feel like for me like when i've had a lot of sort of bourbon or you know any type of american style whiskey um usually the flavor is pretty um full-on um makes me cringe a little bit because it's act that type of flavor is not really what i i'm into um if you're into that that's cool it's not usually for me but um flavor wise it's quite inoffensive um I was actually quite impressed by that. It's very smooth. Um, for something that's 45% alcohol, uh, honestly, really smooth. I like that a lot. Um, it's almost got this very subtle um, aniseed kind of taste. It's almost not there, but it's, yeah, it's kind of like very similar to most other American whiskeys, but yeah, slight aniseed kind of taste in the background, um, but just really approachable, like beginner friendly. Like, I feel like anybody could drink this and, um, enjoy it it's actually quite nice which surprised me because usually again i don't usually enjoy this type of whiskey at all um so that's really good now price wise this is um i paid i want to say 120 130 for this which is a fair sum of money um you know i'm when i'm buying whiskey i'm usually maybe like below 100 sort of that 80 to 100 dollar price bracket for me personally that's kind of the sweet spot. So this is a little more than I'd usually spend on um, whiskey, though it sort of depends. Um, so yeah, this is an interesting one. What would I rate it? Um, no, I want to say like a seven, seven and a half out of 10, because honestly, it's actually really nice. Um, it's not horribly priced. I mean, you do get to keep the bottle afterwards because it's kind of got all that Slipknot stuff on it. and. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, honestly. Like, I find it really hard to fault this whiskey. I think it's just, it's a great whiskey. Um, so I think even if you're, if you're a Slipknot fan, maybe you're not like crazy into whiskey. I think you could still enjoy this. Um, and if you're into whiskey, um, I feel like if you're into like, you know, this type of whiskey, maybe the flavor might be a bit light. Um, so for some people, maybe this isn't quite enough. It's not maybe not full on enough flavor wise, not complex enough, not whatever. Um, but for me, I actually, I actually really liked it a lot. So yeah, seven and a half out of 10 seems appropriate. Price is decent. It's got a good amount of alcohol. I do like that. Um, yes. So the number nine Iowa whiskey, pretty, pretty damn good. Um, I don't really know what else to say. But uh, if you had any doubts about that whiskey, hopefully this was somewhat informative. Uh, all right, I think that's about it. Bye-bye for now.